Hello friends, I'm Alicia and I work at LACMA. Welcome to Andel Family Sundays Anytime. Hola amigos, me llamo Alicia y trabajo en LACMA. Bienvenidos a Domingos en Familia Andel cuando quieras. I am super thrilled to introduce storyteller Ova Saopeng, who will share Southeast Asian tales of Naga and Garuda. Estoy super contenta de introducir al cuentista Ova Saopeng, quien nos relatará cuentos de Asia Sureste de Naga y Garuda. Now settle in for the video. Ahora alístense para el video. Sabay di! Sabay di! Sabay di! Sabay di! Sabay di means hello in the Lao language. It is the language that I speak in addition to English. It is my native tongue. My name is Ova Saopeng and I'm a storyteller. And I am so glad to be here with you today to share with you a little bit about myself, about my culture, and about the mythical beasts, the Naga and the Garuda. <laughs> because LACMA wants us to talk about and explore mythical beasts. So here we are. But to start, let me say that I am a refugee. I come from Laos a landlocked country in Southeast Asia, next to Thailand, Vietnam, and Cambodia. Now, when I was a child, there was a civil war in that region. And so my country was divided. Laos was in chaos. Laos was in turmoil. There was so much uncertainty. So my family, was forced to flee the country and we had to escape and leave our homeland. We had to cross the Mekong River and we lived in a refugee camp in Thailand. And then soon we found our way to the United States of America. Now, I share with you a little bit of my story and my history from Laos because it's important to know where you come from and your story because stories are important and also the stories I'm about to share with you today come from that region if you are to visit Laos or the other Southeast Asian nations that I had mentioned you would see designs and artwork and statues and architecture that highlights the mythical creatures, the Nagas and the Garuda. The first mythical beast is the Naga. Now a Naga is a snake or a serpent with godlike or magical powers. Nagas are usually found by living water, like ponds or lakes or rivers. In Laos, Nagas are revered and respected. And there are many tales about Naga sightings. Uh, there's even stories of Nagas creating fireballs that come out of the Mekong River. Now, the origins of the Naga stories come from Hindu and Buddhist mythology that spread from India all the way to Southeast Asia. Now, most Nagas people are afraid of because they're snakes, but Nagas are well known for being protectors of people. And here's one story of a Naga that is a protector, a famous one, the story of Magalinda, the Naga King. A long time ago, when the Buddha was alive, he would travel to various kingdoms and he would meditate. I am Buddha, and it is time to meditate. Hmm. Look at that lovely tree. 
that looks like a good spot for me to sit and meditate. The Buddha sat there meditating for a long time. Like a long time. Like a long, long time. Like a long, long, long time. He was there so long that the weather around him started to change and the clouds started to form. But it did not disturb the Buddha. He kept on meditating. Soon, it started to rain. And rain. And rain harder. But it did not disturb the Buddha. He kept on meditating. Soon, it started to storm. But it did not disturb the Buddha. He kept on meditating. And then it was as if the earth and the sky were at war. And all this noise shook the earth. It shook so hard <clears throat> that... It woke up Magalinda, the mighty Naga king who lived deep down in the earth. Now, Magalinda was a mighty Naga king. He had seven snake heads. His body was thick as a tree trunk and as long as a tree. And his scales were glimmering gold. What is going on up there? Why is there so much noise? How can anyone rest or sleep with all this noise and shaking? I will have to go up and find out. And so, Margalinda slithered up and up and up all the way to the surface. And when he got to the surface, there he saw the Buddha sitting, meditating, rain pouring on his head, wind whipping his body, water rising up to his knees. And yet, it did not disturb the Buddha, because he kept on meditating. This was astonishing and amazed by Magalinda. How strange! How can this human not be disturbed by the elements and be at peace? He must be a powerful man. I will help him. And so with that, Magalinda coiled himself around the sitting Buddha. He curled his body and lifted up the Buddha above the ground that was wet and dirty. He then lifted up his head and covered the Buddha like an umbrella with his seven snake heads. I will protect you from the rain and wind. I will protect you. And Magalinda stood in that position for seven full days. And finally, the storm passed. The skies cleared. The sun came out. And the earth 
began to dry. And finally, everything was calm. Finally, the Buddha came out of his meditation. Magalinda, Naga King, you have done a great thing. You are kind and gentle. For that, you moving on forward will be known as my protector and everything that is sacred. Thank you for your generosity. Be at peace. And with that, Magalinda returned back to his palace. Full of joy and happiness because he had done a great deed. And that's the story of Magalinda protecting the great Buddha. Now, when you visit the museum, you're going to see, or you can go online and you can see what they call the Naga Buddha statues. And you will see that Magalinda is protecting the Buddha. Our next mythical beast is the Garuda, a part human, part bird-like creature. One of the most powerful beings in the Hindu and Buddhist mythology. This is a story of how Garuda became sworn enemies with the Nagas. It all began with two sisters, Kadru and Vinata. Vinata, I will have a thousand children and they will be very powerful. Kadru, I don't need a thousand children. I just need two, but they will be much more powerful than any of your children. Oh no, they won't. Oh yes, they will. Oh no, they won't. Oh yes, they will. And just like that, their wishes came true. Kadru became the mother of a thousand snakes, a thousand nagas. And Vinata became the mother of two children, Aruna and Garuda. Garuda being the most powerful. Garuda had wings that he could fly anywhere. He had the power to shapeshift into any size. And he was practically indestructible. But even with all these powers, he was powerless against his cousins, the Nagas. Because whatever they ordered him to do, he had to do it. Garuda, go fetch us water. Garuda, clean the palace. Garuda, clean the bathroom. <laughs> I am so sick and tired of serving the Nagas. I don't understand. Why? Why do I have to do this? Why, Mom? Why do we have to serve the Nagas and Aunt Kadru? I'm sorry, my son. That would be my fault. I made a bet with your Aunt Kadru, and I lost the bet. And ever since that day, we have had to serve them forever. But this isn't fair. They, they're so mean and selfish and they treat us like slaves. I want us to be free, free. I know you want us to be free, but the only way is for them to release us. And I don't think they will do that. This is just our fate. Garuda was not the type that believed in fate. He went straight to the Nagas. <clears throat> Nagas, 
Cousin Nagas, listen to me. I want you to release my mother and I. Free us. Psst. Why would we do that? It's too much fun to order you around. I am very powerful. I can do anything. I can get you anything. There must be something that you want. Anything. Anything at all. Well, there is something, but we don't think you can get it. What do you mean I can't get it? Well, it's impossible. This thing is very, very far. I can go anywhere. Well, this thing is very dangerous. I'm not scared. All right. Well, what we want is the nectar of immortality. The nectar of immortality? Isn't that the nectar of the gods? Yes. Isn't that in the realm of the gods? Yes. Isn't it heavenly guarded by a spinning wheel of death and two fiery snakes? Yes. <laughs> you are a fool, Garuda. You won't be able to get it. No one has. We'll see. And just like that, Garuda flies off. And he flies off as far, as far as he can to the realm of the gods. And at the realm of the gods, he finds the pot of the nectar of immortality. But it is blocked by the spinning wheel of death. Hmm. This is impossible. How will I get through the spinning wheel of death? Anything that touches it will die. Ah! I can use my power of shape-shifting and change my size. And just like that, Garuda transforms into the smallest speck of dust and goes through the spinning wheel of death. He then comes upon the fiery snakes. Hmm, so impossible. How will I get through the fiery snakes? Ah! I will use my wings to protect me. And I'll use my sharp talons to destroy the snakes. And just like that, Garuda destroys the snakes. He finally gets the pot of the nectar of immortality, grabs it, and starts to fly off back to the Nagas. But he is stopped by Indra the god of thunder and lightning. Halt! How dare you remove the nectar of immortality? Return it at once! No, I cannot. I need it to free my mother. You cannot give it to the Nagas. You cannot. But I need it. Otherwise, we will be slaves to them forever. Then we will have to fight. And just like that, Indra throws a lightning bolt at Garuda. But Garuda deflects the lightning bolt with his wings. They continue this battle for days and days. Until finally, both of them are exhausted. No one winning. Garuda, you are very powerful. We could go on for days, but it would be useless. Let us make a deal. I will let you take the pot of the nectar of immortality to the Nagas, but you cannot have the Nagas drink the nectar. If you do, they will become immortal and the world will be in chaos. All right, but what about my mom and me? Tell them to set you free first. 
And I will give you any wish you want, any wish at all. I wish, I wish for them to be my food. Your wish is granted. And so, Garuda flies the nectar of immortality on the pot, with the pot back to the Nagas. Here I am, Nagas. I have the pot of immortality in my hand. Now, free and release my mother and I. Fine, fine. We give you our word. You are free. Now give us the nectar of immortality. Here's the nectar of immortality on this pot here. But before you drink it, you should clean yourselves up so that you don't get, you aren't dirty for eternity. Ah, that's a good idea. And so the snakes go off to the river to clean themselves up. At that moment, Indra, invisible, comes and takes the nectar, the pot of the nectar of immortality away when the Nagas return. Where is the pot of the nectar of immortality? Where is the pot, Garuda? You have tricked us. We will, we will punish you. Ha, you cannot punish me anymore. You have set me free. I have made a deal with the heavenly god Indra. And for now, I will destroy you and devour you. And with that, Garuda devours the Nagas. And ever since that day, Nagas and Garudas have been sworn enemies. Thank you so much, Ova. Muchísimas gracias, Ova. What did you like best about this video? Tell me in the comment section. The Andel Family Sundays team misses making art with families in person. We would love to hear from you. ¿Qué es lo que más les gustó de este video? Dime en los comentarios. El equipo de Domingos en Familia Andel les extraña muchísimo. Nos encantaría oír de ustedes. Watch videos made especially for you on LACMA's YouTube channel. And please like and subscribe. Mire videos hechos especialmente para ustedes en el canal de YouTube de LACMA. Y por favor, danos un like y suscríbanse. LACMA respectfully acknowledges that the lands on which our museum is built and the region that we serve is the ancestral and unceded territory of the Gabrileño Tongva, Gabrileño Quich, Fernandeño Tatapiam, and Ventureño Chumash peoples. Los Angeles County has been and is home to many indigenous peoples whose ancestral lands are here and elsewhere. As an art museum and a collecting institution, LACMA recognizes the role we and similar institutions play in the continual displacement of indigenous peoples from their lands, the theft of cultural objects and ancestors from their native caretakers, and the erasure and mar marginalization of indigenous artists in the stories museums tell. We are committed to working to dismantle the ongoing effects of this colonial legacy building networks of support with and for indigenous art communities and tribes, and being better stewards of the lands we occupy. This acknowledgement marks LACMA's commitment to interrogating our own position in the structural conditions of federal colonialism and how we can work to dismantle them. As such, the statement is a work in progress and will continue to evolve through this process. Ova and I filmed this video from our respective homes in Los Angeles on Tongva, Keech, and Chumash land.